Good morning, everyone. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us put our hands together and rejoice. Come on, clap your hands, give God praise. For he alone is worthy to be praised. We ask that everyone would stand now as we prepare for our morning doxology. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Before we start singing, just look at someone and greet them and let them say good morning to them. Amen. Good morning. Again, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Everyone singing, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. Oh, my soul. And all. And all. That is with him. Bless. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And all, and all that is within me. Bless the Lord. Holy. He has done great things. He has done. He has done great things. He's done great things. He has done great things. He's done great things. He has done great things. Bless. Sing it again. He has done great things. has done great things. Everybody singing. He has done great things. He has done great things. He that everyone will remain standing for our devotional period. Our scripture reading will be done by Deacon Darrell George, prayer following by our Deacon Dean. Amen. Good morning, church. Happy resurrection. First, giving obedience to Jesus Christ the head of my life, to Pastor Flores, to all my deacon brothers, and everyone assembled here today. Our scripture reading will be coming from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 20 to 22. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 20 to 
chapter 22. When you get it, say amen. amen. You need a minute, say hold up. And it reads thus. But now Christ is risen from the dead and, and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by man comes death, by man also comes resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all died, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. Amen. Heavenly Father, here we are again to say thank you. We thank you for another day, Lord. We thank you for the resurrection day to Lord. We thank you for rising, Lord. We thank you for being you, Lord. We thank you for everything you do for us, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We rejoice in your day today, Lord. We rejoice in the see this day. Lord, we thank you for our family, Lord. We thank you for our church family, Lord. Bless her, Lord. Thank you for everything you do for us, Lord. Strengthen us, Lord. Strengthen your people, Lord. To always do the right thing, Lord. Thank you for being you, Lord. I say thank you for being you, Lord. We're going to rejoice today, Lord. We're going to sing your praises today, Lord. We thank you for you, Lord. This is not about Easter, Lord. This is about Resurrection Day today, Lord. It's not about the bunny, Lord. It's about you, Lord. 
for dying on the cross, Lord, and rising today, Lord. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for our pastor, Lord. We thank you for being him, Lord. We thank you for that message we're going to have today, Lord. We, Lord, we thank you for um, blessing the sick, Lord. Heal the land, Lord. Heal your people, Lord. Lord, we thank you for everything you do. Lord, stop the violence, Lord. Stop the violence. Stop the children, Lord, who are doing the violence. Lord, we got thank you for the parents. Thank you for being them, Lord. Bless the school, Lord. And Lord, thank you for us. Lord, I thank you for my mother, Lord. I thank you for my sister and my brother. I thank you for my siblings, Lord. My nieces and my nephews. I thank you for me, Lord. Lord, bless me, Lord. Touch me, Lord. Touch our candidate today, Lord. Touch them. And Lord, we do thank you. We do thank you for our jobs, Lord. We thank you for our clothes, Lord. We thank you for what you do for us, Lord, for providing for our family, Lord. And Lord, we thank you. And Lord, in all this, I ask in our precious name, Jesus, Lord. Amen.
worship. Let's stand for praise and worship. Amen.
Clap your hands, everybody. Give God praise. Everyone standing on your feet. As we prepare to greet the person next to you, let them know you're glad to see them. Tell them happy Resurrection Sunday. Come on, put your hands together. The Jesus in me, the Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you. The Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you. It's so easy. So easy. So easy. Easy. Come on. When praises go up, Blessings come down. When praises, blessings come. Hallelujah. 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 Let's praise the Lord. Let's sing it again. When praises, blessings come down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's praise the Lord. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I see you in the future, and you look so much better. You may be seated. Secretary, do you have any announcements? Good morning. District Attor Attorney Charles A. Bally invites you to attend Plaquemines Parish 14th Annual Senior Citizens Day at Bell Chase Auditorium for a day of fun, food, bingo, and information for senior citizens. This is April 24th from 8.30 a.m. to 1 o'clock p.m. This is Bell Chase Auditorium, 8398 Highway 23 in Bell Chase, Louisiana. Second Mount Olive Baptist Church Pastor Anniversary and Banquet is April the 13th, 6.30 p.m., 2108 St. Anthony Street, New Orleans, Louisiana. The donation is $40. The colors are blue and yellow. Greater Round Hill Church Inspirational Choir members cordially invite us to join them for on, uh, with a program that is called Put On Your Full Armor of God. The program will be held Friday, April the 5th at 6.30 p.m. Our own Sis Gwendolyn Brown will be on program. We invite you to come in your war attire, camouflage, or fatigue. If you need us, please don't hesitate to contact us. This is from Sister Pan Pansy Lennox. She's the chairperson. On Wednesday, April the 3rd, Pastor Flores is meeting with the church anniversary team at 6.30 p.m. On Friday, April the 5th, our 164th anniversary celebration kicks off with a one-night revival with Pastor Jonathan Everett pastor of Rock of Ages Baptist Church of New Orleans, Louisiana. Doors open at 6 and 7 o'clock. We come in for 6 or 7. Please remember our church anniversary assessments are $1 for each year. This year is $164. Our theme this year is God Did It. Our church anniversary is Sunday, April the 26th. I'm sorry, 28th, 28th, pardon me, April 28th. Dr. Michael 
Giles of Bethlehem is our guest church. Happy anniversary and happy birthday, birthday to anyone celebrating another year this week. To all our visitors, we extend an invitation to you to fellowship with us again. Thank you. Amen. All of our first-time visitors, we ask that you would stand. If this is your first time here at the Mount, we want to recognize your presence. Amen. We thank God for our brother. Anyone else, this is your first time? Come on, y'all give it up for our first-time visitors. Amen. Come on, clap your hands better than that. Make them feel welcomed here at the Mount. We thank God for them. Thank you for standing. We acknowledge your presence. Make sure we give them a, a visitor's card so they can fill out their information. Visitor cards are located in the foyer, but our ushers will make sure that you get one. Amen? Any birthdays this week? Anybody celebrating a birthday? All right. <laughs> All right. His birthday is today. Amen. Anybody else? All right. Any anniversaries? Anybody celebrating an anniversary? Y'all tell them happy birthday. Happy birthday. Amen. We thank God for you. We ask that you would give your full attention to the announcements. This Friday, this upcoming Friday, April the 5th, somebody say Friday. We know that this month is our church's anniversary month. Amen. Can we give God praise for 164 years of the Lord's church? Amen. 164 years. And our celebration commences with a pre-anniversary revival this Friday at 7 p.m. with Pastor Jonathan Everett of the Rock of Ages Baptist Church in New Orleans. Amen. We want all of you to come out. We want to pack the house because we know that God is using this man of God in a tremendous way. Amen. Pastor Jonathan Everett is doing some great things in this city and in this region. And we want you to come out. He's my friend. He's my brother. And we, I want you to come out and hear this man of God. Amen? Amen? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If you want more from God, you got to hear more of his word. Amen? How many of you are coming out Friday? All right. Bring somebody with you. And then Sunday, <clears throat> immediately after we leave our church, we are headed up to the tab for their pastor's 29th anniversary. Amen. <laughs> Bishop Tyrone G. Jefferson. And they came here and supported us in a mighty, mighty way. And we want to do the same. Amen. The Bible says if you want to have friends, you must show yourself friendly. And they came here, showed up, and showed out. And we're going up to the tab. Amen. To show ourselves friendly. Amen. Now, it's giving time. You can't beat God's giving no matter how hard you try. The more you give, the more he will give unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. He'll cause men to give unto your bosom. Tell your neighbor, you got my blessing in your pocket. Y'all scary, y'all. They won't tell him. Tell them, you have my blessing in your pocket. The Bible said he'll cause men to give unto you. Amen. It's not going to fall out the sky, but somebody going to give it to you in your hand. Amen. If you need an envelope, raise your hand so our ushers, our deacons, somebody can get you an envelope because you're sitting on a blessed row. Amen. Everybody on your row is extremely blessed. You may not know it, but you got millionaires sitting on your row. You got business owners sitting on your row. Very prosperous people are sitting on your row. Amen. Should have had more amens than that. Amen. You can also give electronically on Givelify. That's an app on your smartphone. G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y. The Givelify app. You can give. You go there and look up the Greater Mount Olive Missionary Baptist Church. Make sure you see our church, our picture, amen, because there are, there are a lot of Greater Mount Olive churches. So we want to make sure that you're giving to the right ministry, amen, because all the churches are not nice enough to give us our money back, amen. But we want you to make sure that you are giving to the right church. 
We thank God for all of you who give to the pastor's love offering. Dollar sign, Pastor Flores, and the number one. God bless you. I thank all of you again for a wonderful pastoral anniversary. Amen. I am so proud of you. Listen, I know it was the pastor's anniversary, but I have to say this, that I am so proud of all of the ministries. You guys worked so hard and so diligently to do what you had to do. And, and most of y'all did it in a short amount of time. And here's what I submit to you. Imagine what you can do if you start way ahead of time. Amen. All of you did an outstanding job. Come on, give yourselves a hand. Y'all did an outstanding job. I always say that there is no pastor without the people. Amen. There, there can be no shepherd where there are no sheep. So I thank God for the sheep. I thank God for you, the people of God. And guess what? Y'all got to work hard again for the, for the church anniversary. Because as I always tell you, the pastor's anniversary should never be better than the church's anniversary. See, y'all got quiet. The pastor's anniversary should never be better than the church's anniversary. You should never do more for a man than you do for God's church. So don't just, don't just try to throw a program together and, and all that. No, it has to be done in excellence. Everybody say excellence. Amen. So we're going higher. The standard has been raised. The bar has been raised. You can't go down. You got to go up. Amen. Amen. If you're ready to give, jump up on your feet. If you can't jump up, crawl up, whatever you got to do. Make sure you're standing with something in your hand. You should never come to the king's house without a gift. <laughs> Make sure you have something in your hand. Amen. If you need to borrow something from your neighbor, I told you they're blessed. Borrow something from your neighbor. Everyone stand and repeat after me. I am a tither. I am a cheerful giver. I am God's child. I shall not lack. I am blessed going out. I am blessed coming in. I am blessed in the city. I am blessed in the field. I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. Blessings are chasing me. Promotions are chasing me. Opportunities are chasing me. Money is coming to me from the north, the south, the east, and the west. I decree and declare generational blessings and generational wealth over my life. Somebody shout, I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed in Jesus' name. Shout increase if you believe it.
Come on, everyone, stand, put your hands together. standing Matthew chapter number 28 it is our custom to stand for the reading of the scripture Matthew chapter number 28 when you have it say man if you need a minute say hold up while we're waiting, I want to thank all of you who came out Thursday night. Amen. God was glorified Thursday night. The presence of God met us. Um, the documentary turned out to become a deliverance service. Amen. So we thank God. We thank God for Mother Hale. I saw her come in. I don't know where she Oh, she's back there. We thank God for her. Amen. The documentary is on her and she and her family. Amen. And the Holy Spirit just moved in a tremendous way. That's why I always tell you, no matter what's going on at church, you should come because you never know what God will do. Amen. We're also praying for our family, the Bienemy family. Amen. We want to keep them in your prayers in the passing of their loved one. And all those who are bereaved, we're praying for them. Amen. And don't just say you're going to pray for them, but really pray for them. Take the time out of your day to pray for him. Amen. Don't be so selfish with God. Amen. Matthew chapter number 28. We'll begin reading at verse number 1. And we'll read down to verse number 15. I know it sounds like a lot, but it's okay. It says, In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning, and his raiment was white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the women, 
Fear not ye, for I know that you seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall you see him, lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulchre with fear and great joy, and did run to bring his disciples word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hail! And they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Then said Jesus unto them, Be not afraid. Go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee, and there they shall see me. Now when they were going, behold, some of the watch came into the city and showed unto the chief priests all the things that were done. And when they were assembled with the elders and had taken counsel, they gave a large amount of money unto the soldiers, telling them, saying, His disciples come by night and stole him away while we slept. And if this come to the governor's ear, we will persuade him and we will secure you. So they took the money and did as they were taught. And this saying is commonly reported among the Jews until this day. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. They don't want you to. But get up anyway. Tell your neighbor on the other side. They don't want you to. But get up anyway. You may be seated. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his holy word. Shout it again. Get up anyway. Today, <clears throat> Christians all around the world commemorate and celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead which is without question the greatest exemplification of a comeback in the history of mankind. If you ever want to hear of or read a great comeback story, read the, the account of the God we serve. More often than not, being that we are post-Calvary believers, we romanticize the life of Christ. We, we, we romanticize his years here on earth. However, his earthly life was not always lovely. Jesus was not accepted or liked everywhere or by everyone. Oftentimes, we attempt to portray Jesus as though everybody liked him and everybody wanted him, and that is very far from the truth. When you read the scriptures, Jesus is hated by so many people, and he is hated not for doing the wrong thing, but for doing the right thing. And, watch this, he is hated because he does not fit what they think he should be. And whenever you don't fit into other people's mode and whenever you don't act like they want you to act and think like they want you to think or dress like they want you to dress, people will always have some animosity toward you. They didn't like Jesus. Watch this. People who don't know you will dislike you because you are favored by God. I'll say that again. People who don't even know you will dislike you because you are favored by God. There will be posses and groups of people who will unite, who don't even like each other. But they will join forces 
to come against you. Anybody been there? Where people who you know don't get along, they don't even talk to each other, but they want to come against you. So they will unite forces to come against you. Satan will do anything he can in an attempt to sabotage your destiny. That's why the Bible tells us be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Tell your neighbor, Satan wants you. And that's why you got to pay attention. That's why you got to be careful. You have to watch your circle. You have to watch who you're talking to. Watch who you are around. Watch what you are doing because Satan is on your trail because he knows you are destined for greatness. And you may not know it, but he knows it. And that's why some of us act so foolish sometimes because we have not learned who we are yet. But when you learn who you are, you realize that I must live with rules, boundaries, and limitations. There are some things I cannot say. There are some places I cannot go. There are some people I cannot associate with, not because I am better than you, but simply because I know who I am and where I am going. I got to be careful. Because Satan, again will do anything. Somebody say anything. And he often does what appeals to your flesh. He will use what appeals to your flesh to be your greatest distraction. Now, when we say flesh, automatically our mind goes to some person or something like that. Listen, the flesh is a lot of things. Whatever you like, that's what Satan will use against you. So you have to be mindful of your affections. When we read the gospel accounts, there are countless situations in which the Pharisees and the Sadducees, two sects that did not deal with each other, but they came together against Jesus Christ, they did all types of things to, in an attempt to thwart the mission of Christ. And watch this. They did it because they did not know who he was. Again, they came up against him because they did not know who he was. That's why children of God the people on your job don't like you. That's why they hate on you. That's why they keep messing with you because they don't know who you are. And it's apparent by your silence that you don't know who you are. They don't know that you are a child of God. And that's why they keep messing with you. They, they don't know that you belong to God. That's why they keep messing with you and they keep trying to handle you like you're a regular person. But what they don't know is that you have an anointing on your life. What they don't know is that the hand of God is on you. Anybody know that the hand of God is on you? I may not be perfect. I may not do everything right all the time. But what I do know is that God is with me. And when you know God is with you, you got to tell people, be careful how you handle me. You, you might make me upset, but what you don't want to do is make God mad with you because of how you handle me. Anybody know you are God's child? Because y'all sitting like y'all don't know you belong to God. Anybody know touch not my anointed and do my prophet know? Anybody know that no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper? You got to know that. Sometimes you just got to look at people and shake your head. And say like Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. 
They don't know they putting their mouth on the wrong person. They don't know they putting their They don't know I'm crazy, but I'm still your child. I'm peculiar. Touch your neighbor and say, I'm not regular. I'm peculiar. I'm a peculiar people. I'm a chosen generation. I'm a royal priesthood. My daddy owns everything. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. The cattle belongs to him. The gold belongs to him. The silver belongs to him. Everywhere I go, I'm blessed. I'm blessed going in. I'm blessed coming out. Everywhere the sole of my feet shall try. He told me he was going to give it to me. I belong to God. Watch the text. Watch the text. The women have showed up to the tomb. Jesus has died. They've hung him high. They stretched him wide. He hung his head in the locks of his shoulder. Somebody holler, he died. <laughs> That's good Baptist preacher. Right there. He died. And he died, I heard Pastor Griffin say the other day, when he died, hell went lower, heaven went higher. <laughs> because he died. <laughs> he died, and then Joseph of Arimathea comes, who was a disciple of Jesus Christ. We know about the 12, we hear about the 12, but there were many individuals following him. And watch what the Bible declares, that Joseph of Arimathea was a rich follower of Jesus Christ. This is why he was able to allow Jesus to use his mausoleum that he had just built. He was rich. Tell your neighbor he was rich. Because somebody told you that you had to be poor to follow Jesus. But the Bible declares that Joseph of Arimathea was a rich man who loved Jesus. And he took the body of Jesus, wraps it in inspective linen, and puts it in his brand new mausoleum. Puts a stone in front of it, and then the Bible says that they put a seal on the stone because they wanted to make sure that nobody came to steal the body. So he lay there all night Friday, and he lay there all day Saturday, and all day Saturday night. But the Bible declares, upon the dawn of the first day of the week, somebody say Sunday morning. Upon the dawn of the first day of the week, an angel comes from heaven. An angel cracks the sky, and when the angel comes and cracks the sky, the Bible says that there was a great earthquake. And, and, and the angel rolls the stone away. And according to the book, Jesus gets up. Lord have mercy. Wraps up the napkin and sits the napkin down on the stone. Gets up and walks through Galilee. And then these women come, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of Jesus, Salome and others. They have come to prepare Jesus' body. Because even though he told them he was getting up, they have come to embalm the body. Meaning that they didn't really believe either what he said. They didn't believe the story he said when he said, I won't be here. So they have come now to embalm, but when they get there, the Bible says that the angel starts talking to them. 
And when the angel starts talking to them, great fear comes upon them because the Bible said his face was like lightning and his raiment was white as snow. And he says, I know y'all came looking for Jesus, but he is not here. Do you know, let me help somebody right here, there are people still showing up to your dead place and your dead season and are mad because you're not there anymore. Somebody over here talk back to me if you can. There are, pe there are still people looking for you where you once were. And they are mad when they can't find you. They're still looking for you to be depressed. They're still looking for you to be down. They're still looking for you to be broke. They're still looking for you to be out of your mind. But somebody shout, I'm not there anymore. There are some people in your life who still think that they can talk down to you. But they don't realize, baby, I done met Jesus now. And he done boosts my self-esteem. You told me I couldn't be this. You told me I would never be anything. You, you talked down to me. But then I had a talk with Jesus. And he told me that I am somebody. They looking for you where you were. And listen to me, children of God. If you don't hear anything else I tell you today, hear this. Stop apologizing for rising from your dead place. Ah, some of y'all are good. Stop apologizing for, for rising from your dead place. Stop apologizing for maturing. Stop apologizing for being blessed. Stop apologizing and diluting your intelligence because they don't want to increase their knowledge. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. The worst thing is having a conversation with an ignorant person. And they keep asking, what that word mean? What? Baby, you need to read. So you have to keep minimizing who you are because you, you, you keep going in circles that are ignorant. Stop apologizing and making excuses about why you don't want to hang out anymore. You don't owe nobody an explanation about why you ain't coming. I ain't coming because I ain't coming. Some of y'all can't say nothing because they invited you to the Easter dinner and you got to go. But see, when you really grow in God, there comes a point where you say, I'm not coming because who I am now won't allow me to sit with who y'all still remain. Y'all don't want to talk to me. And there are certain conversations y'all having that I no longer find pleasure in. And you wondering why I'm not laughing at the joke because I no longer find it funny. Y'all don't want to talk to me. Say, neighbor, stop apologizing. That's the text. Some of you are putting yourself through great misery because you have outgrown who you hang around. And, and it's time for you to move, but because they're your BFFs, you hang around them, and now you're miserable, and you're losing your mind, and you're not stimulated intellectually, and you're not, you're not going where you need to go spiritually because you refuse to move. I dare you to tap your neighbor and say, move. Get up anyway. Watch, watch this, watch this. 
while they are running from the tomb because the angel tells them, y'all go, Jesus is not here. While you're running, you're going to meet him. <laughs> and and l let me help you. Watch this. These are women. And this is the gospel message that he has risen. Some of y'all are slow. These are women who are carrying the gospel message that he has risen. Because some people are still arguing today about whether a woman can carry the gospel. Y'all won't talk to me. And some people can't receive a woman who's preaching the gospel. But the first individual to carry the gospel message was not the disciples. It was not the men, but it was these women who, who came in contact with the angel. Somebody can't say amen. Well, Rev, I just, I just don't know, Rev, the Bible. Listen. Stop, stop believing what you heard and read the book. Because some, some of us, you know, oh, well, all, the pastors back in the day and all, they gone. The Bible says that Mary, Mary Magdalene, Salome, and other women went and told the disciples, while y'all in here hiding, Jesus done got up. Y'all don't want to talk to me. While the men were hiding, the women was having church. And I ain't no expert. I'm no statistician. I have no degree in statistics. But I've been in church all my life. And all my life, there have always been more women in the church than men in the church. And let me help you get this chip off your shoulder, brothers, if it was not for the women. Many of our churches would have to shut down. See, now I ain't got no help. The women going to show up while the men at home drinking beer and watching football. The women going to come in here and have a hallelujah time. Sisters, y'all should have shouted louder now. It's too late now. It's too late. It says, y'all go tell them disciples, and while they are running, <laughs> they find Jesus, and Jesus says, all hail. I'm the one you're looking for. And when they saw Jesus, they grabbed him by his feet. Meaning they bowed themselves down and worshipped him. When you really encounter Jesus, you will have to bow down and worship him. Somebody say bow down. You're going to have to humble yourself. And fall before the feet of Jesus. Has, has anybody ever really encountered God for yourself? And know that you can be in your shower. You can be in your car. And you will have to pull over. Because the tears will come running down your eyes. And you have to worship him. You can be in your shower and find yourself on your knees in the tub when you start worshiping him. Worship him. Somebody say worship him. Church would be much better if we would come here and worship him. Forget about, forget about your clothes. Forget about your food on the stove and worship him. Forget about who's sitting next to you and just worship him and give him everything he deserves. 
They worshiped him when they saw him. Some people come to church every Sunday and you don't ever see them worship. Some people sit in church like these lights. Some people don't never say amen. They don't never say thank you, Jesus. They ain't going to wave your hand. The pastor can say wave your hand. The praise and worship leader can say wave your hand. Jesus himself could come down and say hallelujah. And they're going to say, right? It is impossible for those who are really born again to sit when you think about the goodness of God and all that he has done and all who he is, you can't just sit down like that. I don't care. I don't care how sophisticated you are. I know some people say, well, Rev, you know it don't take all that. I know, I know, I know, I know. I, know. I ain't going to bother y'all. It's Easter. I ain't going to bother y'all. Watch this. Jesus tells them, these women, now y'all done met me. Y'all go find the 11 and tell them I got up. Tell them I got up. And the reason I got up is because I told y'all I was going to get up. And, and here's my encouragement to you, child of God, that when you tell somebody who you are and what you're going to do, do it. Don't let depression keep you down. Don't let the opinions of others keep you down. But if you say, I am going to get up, get up. For, watch what the Bible says, a righteous man falls seven times, but he gets back up again. It is not about how many times you fall, but how many times you get back up. Maya Angelou said it like this, still I rise. Jesus said, I told y'all I was getting up, you remember? I told you, destroy this temple, and I'll raise it again in three days. He says, don't y'all remember, I told y'all, just like Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days. I was going to be in the earth, but I was getting back up. I, I, and here, watch this. Here's where you shout, I got too much power to stay down. Somebody missed it. I, I, I'm too anointed to stay down. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Tell your neighbor, I got too much power to stay down. I got up. And, and, and watch this. I cannot go back to my dead place because my resurrection challenges your insecurities. I cannot go back to the sepulcher because you feel some type of way about me getting up. Y'all don't want to. I cannot go back to who I was because of who I am now challenges your insecurities. And here's what the enemy really didn't like about Jesus and what he doesn't like about you. Watch this. Is no matter how hard he tries, he cannot stop your resurrection. That's what really makes the devil mad. Because no matter what he tries, you can't be stopped. Somebody shout, I can't be stopped. And watch this. Sometime I surprise myself. Because there are moments when I wanted to give up. There are moments when I wanted to quit and throw in the towel. Sometime I surprise myself. 
sometimes you got to look at people and say, you know, you mad at me for what God has done with me. And watch this. I'm still trying to understand it myself. What God has done with me. Can I need about 25 of y'all who say, I'm still pinching myself. When I think about how he brought me and how he kept me and how he delivered me and how he healed me, I can't explain it. It's so amazing that the Lord keeps on blessing me over and over. He keeps on doing it. Some of y'all sitting in today, 50 and 60 years old, 70 years old. Never in your life did you think you was going to live to be this old. But look at you in here this morning, in your right mind, looking good, smelling good. The devil thought he had you, but God wouldn't let it be so. And you ought to just lift your hands and and tell God, thank you for bringing me. Because when I thought I wasn't going to make it, you still made a way. Oh, out of no way. I, I, I just need a couple real people. Who say, I know it's Easter, I know it's resurrection, and we got our good stuff on. But every now and then, I think about some stuff. How I could have died in a car accident. How the bullet could have killed me. How cancer could have took over me. But he didn't let none of these things be. And every day by his power, he keeps on keeping me. I need somebody who can lift your hand and say, I got some secrets that I'm glad God didn't expose. I went some places I wasn't supposed to be. I was with some people I shouldn't. Oh, y'all don't want to talk. But I'm so glad that he keeps letting me get up every morning. And every time I fall, he keeps extending his hand and say, get back up again. I hear Donnie McClurkin say, we fall down. But we get back up. For a saint is just a sinner who fell down. Somebody holler, get up. I dare you to high five three people and say, get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Don't let the devil keep you down. Get back up again. Get your joy back. Get your peace back. Get your mind back. Grab somebody by the hand. Shake that hand like you're going to shake it off. And say, I hate to keep bothering you, but I want you to get on up. You've been in this place long enough. Uh, and your mountainside has been rough. But I rose this morning to tell you that the struggle is over. The struggle is over for you. Come on out of that dead place. Come on out of that dark place. Come on out of depression. Open your blinds. Move them curtains back and let the sunlight in. Put some clothes on it. Wash your face and walk in the newness of life. Can you help me preach right here? Grab somebody again and say, get up. He said, if I be lifted. He said, if I be lifted. He said, if I be lifted from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. Now, why don't you help me lift up Jesus? I dare you to open your mouth. And help me lift him up. Help me lift him up. 
how to reach the masses, men of every birth. For an answer, Jesus gave the key. If I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I draw all men unto me. I dare you to high five two more people and say, get up anyway. Get up anyway. They talking about you, but get up anyway. They lied on you, but get up anyway. They let you go from the job, but get up anyway. They don't want you in their little crew and kick you out of their little clique, but get up anyway. Because can I tell you, if God be for you, oh, I thought I had a church this morning. Who can be against you? If one can chase a thousand, two can chase 10,000. Now this is the last time you're gonna bother your neighbor. So you better do it right. Grab one more person and say, for the rest of this service, you're going to be my praise partner. For the rest of this little sermon, you're going to help me shout. For the rest of this worship period, you're going to help me right here. And when I come up, you coming up too. When I get up, your children getting up. When I get up, your business getting up. Now don't shout because I tell you to shout, but shout because you know that God is in the blessing business. Shout because you know God is the truth and every man be a liar. Shout because you know that you're more than a conqueror because you got the victory. Somebody shout victory. Somebody shout victory. Somebody shout victory. Get up, get up, get up. You should be a witness and get up. This ain't about no chocolate rabbit. This ain't about no Easter bunny. But this is about one Friday on Calvary he died. And then early one Sunday morning, he got up. And because he got up, come on y'all, let's have church. I can get up too. They said I wouldn't make it. They said I wouldn't be here today. They said I never amount to anything. But I'm glad to say that I'm on my way and I'm growing more and more each day. They talked about me. Y'all know won't have. But guess what? I'm still here. And somebody ought to lift your hands and say, I'm still here. I'm just like Jesus. You can't keep me down. I'm just like Jesus. I'm going to keep getting back up. I'm just like Jesus. I'm going to shake the dust off my feet and walk through the city. I'm just like Jesus. I got power. I got power. I've got power. Anybody got power? I ain't talking about you got a, a, a good church holler, but do you have power? From down in your belly, I can lay hands on the sick and they recover. I can put demons on the run because I got power. We got to go. Can I ask you one question? And I'm going to my seat. I got to ask you one question. What can wash away my sins? What can make me whole again? Somebody talk back to me and say nothing but the blood. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fountain I know. Nothing but the blood. And it still reaches to the highest mountain. And it still flows to the lowest valley. 
Holler back at me. Oh, yes. The blood that gives me strength from day to day. It will never hope. It will never. It will never. It was good enough for my mama. It was good enough for my grandma. It will never. It will never. Never. It's still working for my children. And I believe it's going to work for my grandchildren. It will never. Oh. Lose its power. Everyone standing there in the building. Get, get up anyway. They don't want you to, but get up anyway. Some people want you to fail. But get up anyway. Young man, young woman, get up. Don't allow your youthful indiscretions to keep you down. So what? You made some mistakes. I got to help somebody. So what? You made some mistakes. You did some things you should not have done. So what? Get up. Don't let the devil keep you in guilt. Don't let the enemy keep you in shame. The Bible says there's therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. You don't live in shame. You go to God and repent. And when you go to God, he'll wash you up. He'll clean you up. And then you live in the newness of life. Though your sins be as scarlet, he said he'll make you white as snow. That's why we got white on this morning. It's an intimation of him washing us. We are clean. You don't have to keep living in your past, rehearsing your past over and over. Get up. Somebody holler, get up. I want to pray for you. Grab the hand of the person next to you. No greater, no greater love. Feel free to come to the altar if you need to. No greater, no greater love. No greater. Jesus went, Jesus went to Calvary to save like you. That's love. That's love. Come on, let me hear. Jesus went, Jesus went to save. Like you and me, oh, that's love. One more time, Jesus, the Calvary, oh, to say like you, yeah, love, that's love, that's love. 
Come on, lift your hands all over the building. But that's not how, but that's not how. The story, three days, he rose. That's love, that's love. Come on. They hung him high, they hung, they stressed him right, he hung his head, and for me, how oh, that's love, that's Just want you tell me, Lord, I love you more than Let's sing. I love you. I love I worship and adore you. Father, we come to you now. God, we come to you now because you are Jehovah. You are our everything. Some trust in some trust in chariots. But we remember the name of the Lord. For the name of the Lord is a strong tower. And the righteous run into it and we find. We come to you now, O oh God. Because we need you like never before. Some need you for this, some need you for that. 
but our truth is that we need you. So God, here we are, hand in hand, heart to heart, around the altar. God, asking that not only will you see the need, but you would meet the need and surpass the need. God, we come now with hearts of thanksgiving, thanking you that Jesus rose. And because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all of our fears are gone. Because he lives, we are healed in our body. We are delivered in our minds. We are set free from the bondage of the enemy. Every trap, every scheme of the enemy is being destroyed today. Every weapon will not prosper. And it is because of what your son Jesus the Christ did. God, I thank you for these individuals that have gathered here today. God, I thank you that they have had the courage to rise this morning and come to worship you in spirit and in truth. I thank you, God, that when they leave here, they shall not be the same. Their lives shall be changed forever because they came to this place. They came and experienced you in a way they have never experienced you before. And God, I ask that you would empower them by your spirit to face, conquer, and destroy anything that comes up against them. God, I decree and declare over their lives today that they are more than conquerors. That they are victors and not victims. That there shall be no more excuses. But they shall walk in the abundance. They shall walk in the fruit of the Spirit. They shall walk in joy. They shall walk in peace. That the blessings of the Lord shall overtake them. In the name of Jesus. And God, again, we thank you that every time the enemy tried to keep us down, you let us get back up again. We thank you that every time the enemy tried to keep us in the gutter, you lifted us. And now shall our heads be lifted up above our enemies. We thank you, God. We give you glory. We give you praise. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Somebody shout because you know you got victory. No. This too shall pass. Somebody give God praise. Come on, clap your hands, give God praise. I just want to tell you, Lord, I love you. Somebody stretch your hand forward and say strength. I say stretch your hand forward and declare strength on this Biennami family. His strength is made perfect in our weakness. Somebody holler strength. Strength of God. 
for praying for the founder. It's a young lady, amen. With young kids and all that. Somebody find me a mic that ain't gonna die. We're praying for them, amen. Is our candidate here to be baptized? Okay. Everyone stand there as we prepare to leave this place. Clap your hand if you were blessed by the word. Come on, give God praise. If, if you're leaving better than when you came, give God praise. Amen. Again, we thank God for all of our visitors. We thank God for family and friends. We ask that you come back. Don't just come on Easter. Come back anytime. Amen. We want to see your face. Very quickly, I don't want to forget, before we leave, I want to extend an invitation. Because I believe God sent somebody here this morning to come to Christ. And somebody may say, listen, I need a church home. We want you to come. If that's you, we want you to come. God bless you, brother. Thank you so much. There may be another. We want you to come. We want you to come. Y'all give our sister a hand. We want you to come. We, we want you to be a member of this family. Come on, we got a brother coming. Come on, clap for him. Give God praise. Shh. We want you to come. We, we, we want you to be a member of the Mount family. And we love everybody over here. Y'all say, we love everybody. We would love to have you. We want you, in the, we want you in this family. I would love to be your pastor. Amen. And Thursday night, we also had someone join during the documentary. A brother came up and said, I want to be a member of this church, Brother Cornelius. And he said, I'm going to watch. He lives in uh, Illinois. He said, but I'm going to watch every Sunday and make sure I tithe and all that. So we thank God, Brother, Brother Cornelius. Can we thank God for Brother Cornelius who's watching? Our brothers and our sister who have come, they've come for membership, all three of them. Amen. Come on, clap your hand. Amen. We know, we know that this is Sister Keontae's husband. Amen. We thank God for him. We thank God that this is Sister Nadia's sister. Amen. And, and that's her son. Amen. Come on, y'all. Make it sound like heaven in the room. Amen. We thank God for that. We ask that you follow, follow uh, Minister Mona. They're going to lead you to the bank. They're going to get all your information. Amen. You still have time if there's someone else you want to come. If you're standing next to somebody, tell them, if you want to walk, I'll walk with you. You know, sometimes people be shy. They don't want to walk by themselves. But we still... I still want you to come, amen. If you're saved and you know you're saved, clap your hands, give God praise. Let us look to the Lord now. Now may the grace of our God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide henceforth and forever. All God's children say amen. amen. Hug somebody, tell them you love them. We have... Shh. We have, some, we have some Easter baskets in the rear for the children.